So as we stated, so we are going to look into what we call from cargo data set to build model in uh, Wicca. We are going to demonstrate with example examples. So how you can benefit. Cargo is a very, very popular uh, data science repository. So we have we have a lot of opportunities. You can even enter competition through them. I mean, they are regularly they put up a competition whereby you can participate and as the case may be. So so we want us so in following following our encouragement that each and every one of us must be able to build by now we should be able to build at least one machine learning model that is get the data then select the appropriate algorithm and then run the model successfully so yeah even if we belong to groups yeah i always encourage people in groups not just uh, not, not not to make just one or two people to work and then that's all. No, it's not that. Everybody needs to participate. And that's why in a single group, you can be working on many models at the same time. Hey, you are going to do literature review for this task. You are going to do the modeling for this task. So the person who did modeling this time will be the one to do literature review in another time. So as a group, everybody needs to be involved. Not that somebody will specialize in literature review, always doing literature review. Another person will specialize in modeling. No, everyone needs to do it one after the other so that we all get to understand this particular thing. We can stand on our own later on as a, a data science uh, practitioner, either as a researcher or as a solution developer and also of other possibilities in this new field. Now, and the unique thing is uh, it's always very straightforward. You see the same procedure, so always remember this. The starting point is data, and that is what brings the, all the, the idea of cargo. And I'm sure there are so many data, data repository. So, but why I've uh, decided to pick cargo is because uh, some of the data sets are actually having huge samples. If you're looking for data set with huge samples, 10,000, 23,000, then cargo often have such free data set. You can get them for free. And mostly, most they are recent data. So, so this is one of the reasons why I say, okay, so let me make more emphasis. It doesn't mean you cannot use data set from any, another sources. No, other sources, you can use as many sources as possible. So, but the data set is always mostly recent because the idea of cargo also is it's recent. So, and then you can get, sizable amount of data set as you're going to see. Sometimes you download data set that uh, maybe you have been looking for or related to your area of interest as high as 50,000 samples or 20,000, 10,000, 5,000, depending on the problem you are solving. So the first step is for you to get the data set, which is very important. It's the machine modeling schematic and the schematic diagram of it. Getting data is very important. That's why we say let the data speak. Without the data set, you cannot, mostly we can't do anything. So this is very, very important. So that's why we're going to start from there. Then after you've gotten the data, then you need to decide on the algorithm that you need to use. Power based on literature review, you have carried out. What are What is the percentage, uh, what is the achievement, performance measure that have been reported before as achievement? So that will guide you. What are the algorithms that often work in this kind of work? Have they been successful in using them? Otherwise, you come up with your own way that you think you can improve this particular kind of a system, as the case may be. Uh, so like I was saying, so once you have your data set, then the next is to select the appropriate algorithm that you are going to use. And then the next is to is to, of course, check the performance measure. If it is not working, it's an iterative process. You can always go back to your data modeling. Maybe the algorithm you have selected is not the appropriate one. Or sometimes you might need to go back to totally add that to the feature engineering sync. Maybe there are some features that are not necessary there, or the, the case may be data preparation. You might need to get your data back totally to prepare it. Are they missing values and also for that? Well, what are we trying to do? We are trying to do performance improvement. 
So this is usually the life cycle that you make your, and sometimes you can pass through back and forth until finally you get it working. You, um, you may have to change several algorithms before you get it right. Sometimes none of the single algorithm will work for you. You might need to develop new algorithm like Ensemble, try to mix many, several algorithms together to get better results. You keep doing this until you are sure that, yeah, this is what I've achieved. So let's start by looking at the data from where I said today we are going to be having Kago as our friend. So as you can see on the screen, this is Kago. You can easily search it out and you can actually also register for free. Then you have access to the data set and also competition, they do bring out competition. You can have a group of people who want to participate in a competition so that you can also, maybe you can win. So real life problem will be posted and then very huge money will be placed on them that, okay, if you can get the best model out, you get the prize. So however, what we are interested in today is the data set now. So you see, so we have so many data set types that you can explore. Just click here, you have the data set, see? So you can actually, you also can add your own data set by the way. So you see, you can add data set as the case may be. You want to view all the data sets, you have them there. So yeah, so many data set you can keep, you can see you can keep going forward as the case may be, yeah. So when you get to nine, it does mean that's the end, you see, to keep going. However, you might want to, because it's so huge, you try, you can try to streamline it. Let's say, for example, I want to do natural language processing tasks, then I click it so that it can bring main data related to natural language processing, or as the case may be. So, and then if I don't like it, I can, you can see here, it puts it here, it has filtered the data set and still is having 2,359 data set belonging to NLP. Okay, I don't want NLP, so. Yeah, okay, we can see whatever you want. Okay, I want classification. You want to deal with classification. So then you can see here, there's a 3,254 data set that are on classification, irrespective of the areas. So as we, classification being very easier to grasp the way it worked. So let's look at what classification data set we might possibly half year or maybe we might be interested in you can check out and the good news also is that apart from going to classification you can also search whatever you want type your data set here let's say i'm i'm looking for a hypertension data set you see hypertension data set for example see even before i finish typing you can see here it's, it's popping up you can see here so Hypertension medication data set, drug data set, BMI hypertension, how many options? Okay. So, yeah. So let's say, okay, which one we want to go for? This one is having diabetes, hypertension, and stroke data set all uploaded together. So you can fix out any one. See, then once you are there, you can explore. So we can see the data, the data, diabetes data is here, hypertension is here, the stroke data is here. Here, this one possibly for each data set, you can see what are the details. This is about diabetes, you can see here. So the details about them. So the number of columns, as the case may be, each column, the visualization about the data set is there. So you can actually play, do a lot of things, even here. So, and if you choose what you are looking for, this is kind of data set description, looking at the distribution of each uh, physical activity, how many people are, have zero or no. Yeah, so each attributes you might want to discuss in the details, you can see here physical activity. So that is, it's asking a question, physical, is the person having physical activity in the past 30 days? Is either yes or no. You see, zero mean no, why one mean yes. Then you can see here, it, this is distribution. These are the number of people without activity, number of people with activity. 
So it means even you can also know the distribution of the samples according to each according to each uh, attribute. So you can see that you can actually export some of these diagrams or visualization if you think you need them in your data in your in your in your, in your report writing finally. And then you can see the detail, the collaborators. Sometimes they will tell you if they are published some paper using the same data set or not. So you can have a lot of exploration for it, as the case may be. This is visualizing the tabular. You must go here. This is hypertension. You can see here the right side. You can click, see it to bring up the hypertension data set. If you want to download the data, you just click here. So download it. And it's, the data is already in CSV. We can use directly in any platform you want. Even we can we pick the data directly for you. So you see how the hypertension data set, you see the attributes that are there, age, you can see the visualization of the age because age is in number. You can see the distribution of age. So different people of different ages. Then you have yeah, male or female, it's evenly distributed. And also for that visualization, you can actually share pain is zero, asymptomatic, typical engineer, then an host of other stuff. So, and then we can look at the further details, description about the data set, or as the case may be. Now, so for today, let us try to look at the hypertension data set. It could be anyone. So that is the hypertension data set is one of the, hypertension is one of the project person I'm working on or present. Because I've noticed that uh, one of the justification for us to pick it up was because one, these days, the, the means to determine if someone is really hypertensive is through this normal blood pressure measurement. You see, and the blood pressure measurement is subjective. If somebody is having, if someone is having, if you have moved from a place to another place, maybe to the clinic, by the time you get there, you, I do hope uh, you can respond with a chat, please. Some people, can we see the screen? I hope my screen is showing. I'm on Kagu, I'm on Kagu data set web page. I want to believe we should be able to see it. Everybody? Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Because I saw someone who couldn't see it. Maybe you can exit. Anybody who couldn't see can exit and then re-enter. I think, yeah, some people can see my screen. Now. So I, I was talking about the justification. So I noticed that, uh, you see, when people walk to the clinic or drive themselves to the clinic or someone drove them to the clinic, you are going to walk before you get to where you're going to take it. And that spikes up your blood pressure. You see, mere walking will make your blood pressure to be higher. Then they ask you to sit down for a long, some time, and then they're going to take the blood pressure later. And then it keeps fluctuating here and there. And then someone's I, people have actually stated that, oh, did you drink tea this morning? If you drink tea not long ago, it's likely going to spark, spike your blood pressure. It means the, the reliability is subjective, actually. So, and even sometimes you might have you are sitting down in a place for a long time, you have not moved, but you have a lot of tasks on your table. Your boss kept sending you email. You know, you are worried that will make your blood pressure to be high. So then I personally have engaged some. I said, doctor, if this is the only way you can determine if there is uh, someone is having high blood, high blood, high blood pressure, so unfortunately for now, that is it. See, so it means there's need to do work there. I know, for example, unlike diabetes, in diabetes, you can do there's a, a, a kind of a, Fasting blood test. If you do fasting blood test, there are specific tests that can determine the average blood sugar in your body for the past three months. So that one is not on just is not just that, okay. You go there, they tap your blood and they check your blood now because you have just eaten food or you have not eaten food. That test will give you an average of your blood sugar for some time, which is better, which is good. However, for hypertension, I discussed that point that. Don't you have something like that one? He said, no, for now, not, not to his knowledge. So that really 
means that we really need to try something out. We'll be working on local data sets, try to get local data sets to see, can we actually predict using simple features that are, can everyone can easily go to the medical hospital, get the clinic, get those uh, attributes out, and then you can use the machine learning application to, I mean, model to predict if you have it or you are able to have it or as the case may be. So just given on a background, um, anyone, people might be interested also in the stroke prediction. The idea is we want to be able to establish somebody is suffering from something because people suffer from some of this ailment long time without even knowing until it has caused irreparable damage to their body. So with technology, I want to believe we can help ourselves by doing what I call preemptive diagnosis, that is letting people know their health status earlier enough before the symptoms arise. Because by the time symptoms start coming, it might be already too late. Damages will have been done to different organs in the body. So based on this, we, go, we can go with any data set, but now let's look at the uh, hypertensive data set as the case may be. So, okay, that's visualizing the raw data. Yeah. I don't want this, so I want you to bring out the. Now, let me download the CSV from here straight. You are going to get the CSV, you can see here. So, which you can immediately, you can extract it. Yeah, you can extract it here. Yeah, so extract it here, then copy as the case may be put in your appropriate folder where you may want to use it as the case may be to save our time. Do we have it here? Yeah, we could have it here. Yeah. Yeah, you can have it here. So let's see, we have the uh, potential data set as the case may be. Now, something that you might note, let me clarify this because when you want to practic practicalize it, you might face a little issue there. So let's say this is the uh, this is the data set. Yeah. Yeah. You can see this is the data set. Now, so this is a hypertension data set. You can see a couple of, of course, we have to go and read what are the meaning of this attribute, age, sex, CP, so cholesterol level, and also for other attributes. Now, this is the target. The data is already arranged for you. You can take it to any platform. You can take it to your, to your weaker directly, and it works for you. But something I want you to know is, <clears throat> if you load this data to weaker, because you're having one for no, sorry, for yes, and you're having Because you're having one for yes, and then zero for no, as you are going to see. So there's need for you to do a very quick pre-processing here. Very quick one. And what is that quick pre-processing? So just do your simple on the go, search and replace. You can see, select this column to make sure you are working on this column only. And then you can convert Anywhere you see one in that column, you want it to become yes. So then you replace all. So 14,274 replacement made. That means that is the number of yes you have. Then go immediately there, zero, and then change it to no. And then replace all. 11,000 replaced, 11,809 replacement. That means the number of samples. It means we have more yes, people with hypertension than people without hypertension in this data set. That's interesting. Mostly you see lesser number of people that are positive to disease compared to people that are negative. Now, in this case now, of course that shows the prevalence of hypertension in the community. So of where this data actually came from. 
Now, so once we have done that, the reason for doing that is if you let it go in as one or zero, the moment you 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 and you you enter your data, you load it into Wika. You see, Wika will look into one as a regression problem because one is a number, so it will disable some of the some of the some of the algorithm that work on classification, thinking that your model is. It's, you are trying to build a model that is regression based because the outcome here is one or zero. So it's always good to do a simple search and replace for your target only and make sure you select this. Otherwise, if you just say find a replace, it will change all these values which you are, you are messing up with the data set. So make sure you select this column that has your target, which is the status of this particular sample. Is this sample, is it hypertensive or not? So once you select this and then you start and replace, you get your now data set ready to go in as the case may be. So now, okay, okay. So just to repeat what I just mentioned, and that is uh, the, The procedure, see, this is the original data set. This is what we have here. The target is you have hit here, one, zero, one, zero. And already in the cargo, you can see the defining there. They say one means yes, zero means no. That means people don't suffer from the disease. But here, if you want to load it to Wika, because we are using Wika for now, for some other platform, you might not need to do this. That could be fine. I will, uh, yeah, that could be fine. So also, if you are using support vector machine, even in Python. You see, if you have zero as your target, SVM will give you error. You see, it will give you error. So even when you use coding, Python programming, so if a student face such recently came to me and I said, okay, this is the challenge you are facing, you have to change this and then the problem got resolved. So you need to change the target appropriately. If you are going to use support vector machine, then in that case, you have to make sure that there is no zero in the target. So you can make one to be yes and two to be no, or as the case may be. If it is one zero before, what I just do is I add one to everything. So zero become one, which is no, and one becomes two. By, those, by so doing, all algorithm will be able to solve it because there's a particular special error that comes up when you are using a target of zero. For support vector machine. However, for this case, in, in a weaker, your output determine the kind of problem you want to solve. If the output here is there are numbers, one, zero, that means you are trying to solve a regression problem. So some algorithm for classification might not be might be gray out. So that is why it's good to first of all do a simple replacement, click this column, control find, just press control F. You see, that is control F means you want to find. Then go for option of replace, not just find, replace. Now put it there, find what? Find one, replace one with yes. So, and then here you can see options. So you say replace all, you can just replace, it will replace it one by one. You get the point? So by this replace all as the case may be, so you can see all replaced. Now, then you go and find what? Find zero. Now look for zero now and replace zero with no. And then again, replace all. You can see it will tell you the number of replacement that has been made. And if you had it together, the number of one replaced, the number zero, it will add up to the total number of data that you got stated in Kaggle website. So to be sure everything has been replaced appropriately. And this happens to be a little bit uh, big data. I mean, so you can see here a lot of no's, no's, yes, yes. So the data is almost 26,083. Now, so once you have done that, this data set is ready for upload to Wika because it's already in CSV. So to be on the safer side sometime, I also ask you to do this. Is CSV, because you have different version of the CSV. So from experience, sometimes, depending on the version of Wicca, you might run into some maybe error not recognized. 
try to save file us, save us, save us. See, then save us. Now change the type of format you want. This is CSV comma delimited. This is okay. But what I've noticed is that if you use CSV, yeah, CSV UTF-8 comma delimited is a little bit more robust. Sometimes we get error when we use the ordinary one. Comma delimited should work for you ordinarily. But if it doesn't work, you give you error and you are sure it is CSV file, don't worry. Just come here and save us UTF-8. It is still the same CSV file, okay? It's like a more advanced form of uh, the CSV file you have saved. And it doesn't change anything to your data set. Yeah. Then it's going to save it. It's saving a CSV. It is also a CSV. Just to avoid the situation whereby when you load your data to Wicca, it doesn't work. Now, having done that now, let's move on. And now the next thing is, remember our system here. So our data is assumed to be ready now. So of course, Later, we can see if the features are good, but let, let the data speak. Now I want to see, let the data speak now. Let me go for modeling. Let me go for modeling, which is, let the data speak now. Because I don't want you to waste too much time on, is the data balanced? Is it not balanced? Is the attribute good? Is it not good? Don't waste your time much. Since you have the data thread ready, take it to the, a modeling environment, run the experiment, see what you can get. Then you can then come back. There's always room for this iteration. You can come back again to check. Oh, what I'm getting is not good. Let me change the algorithm. But at the first time, you need to first of all check that, okay, what is the data going to say? 